In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who have come to know the grace of the Lord's resurrection may, through the love of the Spirit, ourselves rise to newness of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles Saul was still breathing threats to slaughter the Lord's disciples. He had gone to the high priest and asked for letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus that would authorize him to arrest and take to Jerusalem any followers of the way, men or women, that he could find. Suddenly, while he was travelling to Damascus, and just before he reached the city, there came a light from heaven all round him. He fell to the ground, and then he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul! Why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? he asked. And the voice answered, I am Jesus, and you are persecuting me. Get up now and go into the city, and you will be told what you have to do. The men travelling with Saul stood there speechless, for though they heard the voice, they could see no one. Saul got up from the ground, but even with his eyes wide open, he could see nothing at all, and they had to lead him into Damascus by the hand. For three days he was without his sight, and took neither food nor drink. A disciple called Ananias, who lived in Damascus, had a vision, in which he heard the Lord say to him, Ananias! When he replied, Here I am, Lord, the Lord said, You must go to Straight Street and ask at the house of Judas for someone called Saul, who comes from Tarsus. At this moment he is praying, having had a vision of a man called Ananias coming in and laying hands on him to give him back his sight. When he heard that, Ananias said, Lord, several people have told me about this man and all the harm he has been doing to your saints in Jerusalem. He has only come here because he holds a warrant from the chief priests to arrest everybody who invokes your name. The Lord replied, You must go all the same because this man is my chosen instrument to bring my name before pagans and pagan kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he himself must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went. He entered the house and at once laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, I have been sent by the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on your way here, so that you may recover your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, it was as though scales fell away from Saul's eyes and he could see again. So he was baptized there and then, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. He began preaching in the synagogues, Jesus is the Son of God. The Word of the Lord. Go out to the whole world. Proclaim the good news. O praise the Lord, all you nations. Acclaim Him, all you peoples. Go out to the whole world. Proclaim the good news. Strong is his love for us. He is faithful for ever. 
Go out to the whole world. Proclaim the good news. Alleluia, Alleluia. It was ordained that the Christ should suffer and rise from the dead and so enter into his glory. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews started arguing with one another. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They said. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. As I who am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father, so whoever eats me will draw life from me. This is the bread come down from heaven, not like the bread our ancestors ate. They are dead. But anyone who eats this bread will live forever. He taught this doctrine at Capernaum in the synagogue. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Life is exuberant. When we experience something beautiful and wonderful, especially in our lives, we want to share it, we want to radiate it, we want to shout with joy and proclaim it. And when we feel that there are others who are not experiencing this joy, this exuberance of life, we want others to also um, enjoy, appreciate, capture the spirit. And God, who is the God of life, wants us to share this life of His, this love of His. And there's something called divine accommodation. Um, this doesn't mean that, wow, this accommodation is so nice, it's so divine. It is not that. Divine accommodation is when God, seeing how we humans are not able to appreciate, understand, enjoy who He is or what He wants to share with us, he actually comes down to our level, which is why we have the incarnation where God becomes man to be one of us, to show us the way back to God, and then to die for us. And in this season of Easter, there is a new creation, new life through the resurrection. But many of us live our our Easter as if nothing has really changed and we're thinking to ourselves, what has changed? And I think here we allow God to come to us and to be with us, this divine accommodation, and to allow ourselves to be caught up um, by what the Lord wants to share with us, wants to teach us. And today in our Gospel, Jesus teaches us that He is the living bread come down from heaven. It is not a dead bread. This bread is living. Why? Because Jesus, who was crucified on the cross, died but came back to life. He is risen. And that makes the Eucharist the living bread. And which is why that same Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is the same Spirit that will transform um, bread and wine into the flesh and blood of Jesus, which is why it is living. And we who partake of it will also have life within us, which is why we Catholics believe that that ordinary piece of bread is really Jesus' flesh and body, and that wine is the blood of Christ. And if we partake of it, we will then be one body with the Lord, but also one body with everyone else, all our brothers and sisters. 
And this is the hope that we have as a church, that despite difficulties and trials, we would stand together, band together as one in the Spirit. Let's look at the story of St. Paul, this powerful story in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, where we have uh, Saul um, encountering the risen Lord in a very powerful way on his way to Damascus. He heard a voice. And that's divine accommodation. If this persecutor of the church don't know how to see, recognize the Lord who has come among us, then this risen Lord is going to go to him and in a very, very dramatic way. And the good thing is, Saul caught it. But is the church, the other Christians, ready to accept Saul as one of them? And which is why God sent Ananias, who will be sent to Saul and to tell him that, look, the Lord has come to you and you are to be this great apostle for the good news. But we need Ananias in our lives who are fearless in meeting people who seem to be threatening or scary. Uh, but Ananias was without fear. He heard the voice of the Lord saying, go to this man. But Ananias said, do you know that this man is persecuting us and killing us? But the Lord said, go. And Ananias went. And sometimes we're called to be Ananias in other people's lives. That sometimes we don't see the logic. We don't see like, how can this be? Um, but if we hear the, the Lord prompting us to go, then let us go. Because God is real, the Holy Spirit is real, and our faith is real. So in this season of, season of Easter, let us continue to allow ourselves to be caught up um, by this life, this love of the Lord, and to continue to spread this exuberant life and love to all. And let us now pray in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.